Good to know you're still with us. You're watching The Breakfast in Floss TV Africa this fine Monday morning. Hopefully it is good to all of us. It's the beginning of the week and um, I think it's really nice that uh, we're starting off the week being reminded of the importance of tolerance. Today is International Day uh, for tolerance and uh, it's uh, commemorated every year since 1995. It is marked by the United um, Nations and um, it is also coinciding with the 125th anniversary of the birth of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, it, it pays tribute to his values of peace and non-violence as well as equality. Now, UNESCO created a prize for the promotion of tolerance and non-violence. Uh, that prize is awarded every two years. It rewards significant activities in the scientific, artistic, cultural, or communication fields aimed at the promotion of a spirit of tolerance and non-violence. Okay, let's see um, how we can um, counter intolerance that is something uh, we will uh, take a look at in a bit but just to let you know we won't be doing this talking alone no, we'll exactly. be joined as soon as we can establish contact by professor chris wakobia um, he is uh, a public affairs analyst so uh, still talking about this uh, day what can we do to counter intolerance um, the United Nations has a couple of suggestions that we'll be sharing with you this morning, and that is through laws. Yes. Now, they, they, say, they say governments are responsible for enforcing human rights and banning punishment, at, as well as hate crimes, yeah. you know, yeah. dealing with issues that come up of that. And if we don't have laws that help to entrench tolerance, tolerance. will continue to have a scenario where people... One of the things, you know, that the you know, UN um, also mentions is education. Yes, indeed. Um, and, of course, uh, better enlightenment for people uh, who, of course, exist around the world on tolerance and the, the need to tolerate religion, culture, and, and tribe and all of that. Um, we'd like to say good morning once again to Chris Wokobia. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be on with you. Okay, talk, right. talk to us about uh, your thinking on the importance of commemorating this day, especially a world ravaged by extremism, you know, crimes of all kinds, racism, and all of that. No, I, I think that first, uh, we cannot run away from the fact that uh, my mentor, Martin Luther King Jr., once said, that we either learn to live in peace and to do away with violence, or we die as a result of violence. You know, I, I do sincerely believe that the way to go is to understand that all of humankind belongs to one tribe, and that the entire human race has the same life essence, which is the color red, our blood, and that oftentimes most conflict and crisis ends at the table of dialogue. No matter how much we disagree, um, we ultimately will have to sit at the table to resolve our contradictions and our conflicts. Right. So uh, the United Nations and indeed the world did not go wrong when it thought about the need to engender tolerance, long suffering, forgiveness, and understanding. I do sincerely believe that those values and etiquettes are germane, strong and deep, and that if we must grow great values as a people, we, we have to walk the path of uh, peaceful negotiations, uh, mutual understanding. Uh, we have to engender the, the fountains of tolerance so we, we, I, am, I am excited that we have a day like that on our calendar. I'm excited that we're talking about the need for long suffering, for tolerance, for peace, and for uh, brotherhood. Right, Professor, Professor Wong uh, I want to uh, get you to quickly speak also on 
uh, something that I feel might be one of the challenges that the world in general, and of course here in Nigeria, um, has with uh, tolerance, and that is religion. How do you think we can manage uh, religious extremism and our love for our religions, um, and of course bringing tolerance into all of that? No, I, I think chiefly that when we talk about religious intolerance in this part of the world, uh, and then quite a large part of our world, you, you know, because um, you do have a whole lot of religious intolerance in the Middle East. You do have a lot in, um, in Africa. And then, unfortunately, ours have become not only religious intolerance, but religion being deployed as a tool for, for political advantage. But I think that what we must do now that the world is celebrating, or today that the world is celebrating to tolerance, what we must do is to, uh, to tell our religious leaders that particularly for those who are Christians and Muslims, whose progenitors are basically one, uh, Christians and Muslims are from the same uh, great-great-grandfather, if you like, Abraham, Ibrahim. Uh, they, they must learn to understand that Israel, Israel, Ishmael, and Isaac were children of the same father. And we must understand that religion should be personal rather than political, rather than a vehicle for political advantage. We must also understand that when a man is sick or a woman is sick, and you must have need of blood transfusion, your doctors will not tell from your blood if you're Muslim or Christian. You can take blood from any human being, black, white, Christian, Muslim, animist, humanist, or whatever. So when we understand that our life essence is indiscriminate of creed or clan, we perhaps will be able to engender what I call the human tribe and learn to understand, learn to cope with each other, learn to disagree to, to agree, and learn to live together as one people. All right, Professor. That's what we must begin to do. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your uh, thoughts thus far. Um, we we want to see uh, your thinking when it comes to the young people. Uh, do you see a more tolerant approach to issues than um, with the older generation? Or is the, especially with the NSAS protests, some people say the youths have been tolerant for a very long time. And now that they, 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 the wire has caught, so to speak. Uh, do you agree with that analogy? Uh, what do you think going forward uh, we should look at? Well, let me make you smile a bit. I think that the young generation is far, far more tolerant than uh, uh, the old. I say this advisedly. Uh, with matters of religion, we, we appear uh, broad-minded. With matters of ethnicity, we appear very broad-minded. And then with re in relation to the ANSAS protest, you saw the level of dignity with which the young people conducted that protest. Until some political forces provoked the violence, for 12 days, Nigerian youths did show that they can conduct their protest with the highest level of decorum. They were absolutely peaceful. They were absolutely tolerant of several tendencies that indeed tried to provoke them. You remember that it was until that massacre at Lekki that that thing turned uh, violent. So I, I want to say that largely, maybe because of the availability of information, largely maybe because of the availability of the internet, largely maybe because across boards, uh, we do not seem to have Christian Muslim divides in our personal relationships. Uh, young people have come to understand that we belong together. They have come to understand that we, together we can move this country forward. And so in their protest, they are indeed tolerant. In their conduct, they are indeed tolerant. And I do sincerely think that what government must do 
is to tap into it rather than provoke the young people. Okay, um, let, let me, I let me ask in the you, advice. in the interest of time, uh, I let me... in the advice. Um, in the interest of time, I'd like to interject. You, you've, talked, you've touched on some of the um, recommendations by uh, the UN to counter um, intolerance. Uh, but I want you to speak on the one about local solution, individual responsibility. On that, they are saying that when confronted uh, with escalation of intolerance around us, we must not wait for governments and institutions to act alone. We are all supposed to be part of the solution. Now, where is the role of local solution and individual responsibility when it comes to promoting tolerance? I agree sensibly that um, societies are the function of individual age and ego. Uh, society grows because uh, as a lie, a summon bonum, a, a, a total calculation of the different units. So I, I believe that in our individual homes, Parents must play some role in learning, in teaching their children to understand that you're not the weaker vessel when you do not resort to violence. Individuals must also learn to understand that a man is stronger who is able to forgive, that greatness in their, is in the ability to forgive and overlook provocations. Because I do sincerely believe that if man has been able to guide missiles into the moon, guide missiles into the space, man should also learn to tame himself, to guide his emotions and, uh, and temperaments. So uh, from the units, the homes, from schools, uh, universities, our higher institutions, our churches, preachers, teachers, and leaders, must learn to teach the young to be long-suffering. Oh. Right, must learn to teach the young to be tolerant. Okay. All right, must Professor, learn to we'll teach the young here. to be forgiving. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast and sharing your thoughts on the International Day for Tolerance. It's appreciated. Thank you so very much. I'm excited and about one of the things that you mentioned um, with regards to the NSAS protest and the... Um, idea that uh, the young people in Nigeria today um, are, are able tolerant. to exa ex exactly, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm, I was, I'm hoping, you know, that it's, it shows that with better education, that with uh, information technology, that with the internet in general, and of course, um, the fact that we're a younger generation who have seen the ills of the past and seen uh, what the divisions of government, politics, religion, tribe, and, and, and all of that has um, caused the earth. I'm hoping that we're a more tolerable generation moving into yeah, the future. So, so, something else he didn't actually spell out as is, but he talked a lot about it, was awareness, individual awareness, because intolerance breeds intolerance. Yes. yes. So if we are aware and we have access to information, uh, he also alluded to that when he talked about that maybe uh, the young, uh, um, the youngest more tolerant because they have access to more information than the older generation. Um, whether he's right or not, it's imperative that we begin to learn how to come to the uh, a dialogue table and not um, trying to, you know, play down on someone else's intelligence when, as we see that a lot of persons are saying when it comes to the issue of government uh, pulling you in with one hand and slapping you uh, with the Edu other. Education is also very important. Yes, indeed um, it is. The reason we have, um, we have a, a protest that, you know, like he described, was able to show some of these values and these qualities was well, mostly because of the level of education amongst those people. Um, I'm hoping um, that we will be able to spread that level of education because a lot of things that we deal with uh, in our society today across the country in both North and South, East and West, um, a lot of them come from hunger. 
lack of proper education and all of those you know little little factors that eventually turn into something else um i know a lot of you watching will be wondering why we are talking about the NSAS protests but it's still a topical issue and we do have a lot to talk about it still on the breakfast After hello this break hope you enjoyed the news please do subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates